All right, greetings all. Raphael X here with another video. Trying to do something new. Got a new microphone, got to get used to it. All right, as always, let's start with a prayer, shall we? In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum, benedita tu mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunca in ora mortis nostre, Amen. Ave Maria, sede sapiencia, ora pro nobis in nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. All right, well, it's great to see you all. It's been a while since I haven't done a video. It's super hot here. Um, especially in this new house I bought, second floor is, is crazy. Oh, excuse me. So, um, yeah, today, um, kind of craziness was going on with the whole celebration of Pride Month, right? Pride Month, which pride is a sin, right? It simply is. And it's not for our good, right? We say that as uh, through charity. And not because, right, we just want to come down on, right, the LGBT plus, as I say, LMNOP uh, people, right? We want to be charitable to them. And precisely because we want to be charitable, we want to let them know that it's sinful. So originally, the, the month of June, and especially in a more uh, confessional way, in a public way, was dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, right? So that's officially by the church where a speech day is celebrated in June. Let me get used to this microphone. But now it has been hijacked by the Pride Month. So we're seeing that the antithesis here, the antithesis here um, coming through the Pride Month, right? So we need to fight that. We need to fight that. I want to make, mention some quotes here. And first of all, the History Channel has gone totally gay as many places have, I mean, they've just, they're just totally in bed with this whole, right, um, LGBT pride garbage. And we really need to push back. We really need to start pushing back, cost what it may. So I do want to talk about a little bit the, <laughs> the history of the gay rights movement as the, um, as the, uh, the History Channel sees it. All right, so first of all, let's see how the History Channel reveals, and it's pretty illuminating, the, the history of the gay rights movement, which doesn't have much history. I know they want to incorporate this into the history and the social studies curriculum in many schools, especially here in New Jersey. But um, it really doesn't have much history, but let's talk a little bit about it. So the gay rights movement in the United States has, has seen huge progress in the last century, and that's true. It has only existed in the last century. And gay rights, we talked about rights, rights ultimately have to be based in nature, right? They're not just capricious. They're not just based on the whims. So gay rights is something that really doesn't exist. You don't have rights based on your sexual orientation, orientation which I've mentioned in other videos. Laws prohibiting homosexual activity have been struck down. Lesbian, Gay, bisexual, and transgender individuals can now serve openly in the military, <laughs> and we'll talk about this. Same-sex couples can now legally get married and adopt children in all the in all fifty states, and this is a huge problem. This is a huge problem, and studies show this is a problem. Um, even though there's probably there's not a lot of data, the the, the studies I have from, uh, read and some anecdotal evidence have shown that it is quite harmful. And as nature dictates, nature is rigid. Right. The rigidity of nature is a real thing, but it has been a long and bumpy road for gay rights opponents, proponents. So the History Channel is obviously on the side of as many of these uh, woke, you know, um, companies and corporations and, and especially channels like the History Channel. They're still advocating for employment, housing and transgender rights. All right, well, let's talk about some of these uh, historical uh, movements is important to know. The early gay rights movement. In 1924, Henry Gerber, a German immigrant, founded in Chicago the Society of Human Rights, the first documented gay rights organization in the United States. During his U.S. Army service in World War I, Gerber was, or Gerber, was inspired to create his organization by the Scientific Humanitarian Committee, a homosexual emancipation group in Germany. So it's interesting that the History Channel is starting in 1924, as if this 
is a long it's a long history right it's just some some man finding and i mean there were you know there should never be discrimination against individuals as we mentioned but again there is no such thing as gay rights uh rights pertaining to you uh as a according to your sexual orientation Gerber's small group published a few issues of its letter friendship and freedom the country's first gay interest newsletter Police raids caused the group to disband in 1925, but 90 years later, the US government designated Gerber's Chicago house a national historic landmark. A lot of this like sodomy, you know, we really need to bring back the sodomy laws. We'll talk about that later. I mean, it's, it's a huge health concern, right? It's, it's a dangerous act. Anything that goes against nature is a destruction towards us, right? And society needs to legislate According to, according to morality, right? Um, we need to bring back the confessional state, not, not a theocracy, of course, but, you know, the Christianity which animates uh, the laws, right? The principles of society. The gay rights movement, again, gay rights, quote unquote, stagnated for, next, for the next few decades through LGBT individuals around the world, uh, did, for, for they did not come into the spotlight a few times. For example, all right, there's some and some um, certain events that happen. Let's go to homophile years, right? In 1950, so it jumps to 1950. I mean, this is 70 years ago. Harry Hay founded the uh, Madachine. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Madachine Foundation, one of the nation's first gay rights group. The Los Angeles, of course, in California, the organization coined the term homophile, which was considered less clinical and focused on sexual activity, uh, focus on sexual activity than homosexual. So, um, so this homophile was something that, a term that was, that was claimed ultimately, that was coined, sorry. And it was just a less clinical term. Though it started off small, the foundation which sought to improve the lives of gay men through discussion groups and related activities expanded around founding members, Dale Jennings, who was arrested after 1952 for solicitation and then later set free due to a deadlocked jury. I don't know if I'm reading wrong or if this is written badly. <laughs> Maybe me is a little late. So um, so the Matachine Society Foundation, the members re restructured the organization to form the Matachine Society, which had local chapters in other parts of the country and 1955 began publishing the country's second gay publication. And of course, that same year, four lesbian couples in San Francisco founded an organization called the Daughters of Belitis, which soon became publishing a newsletter called The Ladder, the first lesbian publication of any kind. I mean, these people are, I mean, why this obsession with sexual orientation, right? Even, you know, someone were to have a sexual orientation to someone of the same sex, I mean, why this stress on it? The whole thing with transphobia too, it's really, if you're transphobia, I mean, so what? I mean, it's almost, it's logical to have a phobia towards someone who, uh, if they go through it all, to, that mutilates their body. I mean, it's almost logical. I mean, I would, I'll be scared of an individual like that. I'm scared, I'm scared of trans, of, of trans uh, genderism. I mean, it's scary, but I guess I'm a transphobe. The following year, President Dwight D. D. Uh, Eisenhower's 1953 signed an executive order that banned gay people, or more specifically, people guilty of sexual perversion, <coughs> excuse me, from federal jobs. This ban will remain in effect for some 20 years. This is, there's a reason for this. There's a reason for this. Again, this, this um, absurd focus on sexual orientation is not something you want to bring into the work uh, environment. Don't ask, don't tell, which we're going to see. That's, a, that's something brought about by a Democrat, which is very logical. Why would you want to right, announce your sexual orientation? No matter, even if you're a heterosexual, it doesn't, it's, it's not proper, especially in a professional setting, right? The gay rights movement saw some early progress in the 1960s. In 1961, Illinois became the first state to do away with its anti-sodomy laws. Illinois, of course one of the most liberal states, effectively decriminalizing homosexuality. 
and a local TV station in California aired the first documentary about homosexuality called The Rejected. So you're seeing a softening up towards uh, homosexuality in general. It's 1965 was the first time they coined the term transgender in 1965 in the book Sexual Hygiene and Pathology by Dr. John Olivin. Right, this was the, um, the term transgender is coined and it describes someone who was born in the body of the incorrect sex, right? I'm infallible, right? So what's not correct is the reality, not me. It's tremendous pride here. But more than eight years earlier, transgender individuals entered the American consciousness when Christine Jorgensen came out as trans as a trans woman following gender confirmation surgery. So we have um, 10 years earlier than that. So it's about 1955, 65, the first the term transgender was used at least in a, in a serious public, more formal setting, right? It was used by a doctor in a book. 10 years earlier though, they have um, a woman came out as trans. Officially, again, in the history, of course, you have this, but this is something that, um, that the, well, the, there was a confirmation surgery. So this is the first time that's probably been uh, gone through in, in, uh, in probably, I mean, there's, there has been mutilation of parts before, but this is probably in a more, again, formal setting, more um, directly trying to right, change someone's sex through mutilation, right? In the, in, in the medical field, something more, how do you say it, more exacting, if you will. Despite this progress, LGBT individuals lived in a kind of urban subculture and were routine, routinely subjected to harassment and persecution, such as in bars and restaurants. In fact, gay men and women in New York City could not be served alcohol in public due to liquor laws that consider the gatherings of homosexuals to be disorderly. I mean, <laughs> their studies show that homo homosexuals who live by their tendencies, let's distinguish between homosexuals and gays, they are more promiscuous and by far right so that's why aids is what we're going to see in a little bit is an epidemic within heterosexuals have aids but it's much higher the rate of hiv in the the homosexual communities bartenders would deny drinks to patrons suspected of being gay or kick them out altogether others would serve them drinks but force them to sit facing away from other customers to prevent them from socializing all right there, there has been a pass of discrimination. There's no doubt about it, but there's one extreme, then we jump to the other extreme, right? So the Stonewall Inn, this is actually uh, pretty famous. It's 1969, some riots here. Um, this is actually what kind of uh, crystallized the, the whole gay rights movement, gay rights, right? The clandestine gay club, Stonewall Inn, was an institution in Greenwich Village because it was large, cheap, allowed dancing and welcomed drag queens and homeless youths. Yeah, a totally healthy place, right? Morally sound. But in the early hours of June 28, 1969, New York City police raided the Stonewall Inn. Fed up with the years of police harassment, patrons and neighborhood residents began throwing objects at police as they loaded the arrested into police vans. The scene eventually exploded into a full-blown riot with subsequent protests that lasted for more than for for five more days so that's um yeah you can definitely um you can actually see photos of this um of the stonewall in riots right? they, they exist it was famous shortly after the stonewall uprising members of the matachine society split off to form the gay liberation front a radical group that launched public demonstration protests, confrontation with political officials. Uh, in 1970, at the one year anniversary of the Stonewall riots, New York City community members marched through local streets in commemoration of the event. Named the Christopher Street Liberation Day, the march is now considered the country's first gay pride parade, right, 1970. Activists also turned the once disputable pink triangle into a symbol of gay pride. Uh, the pink triangle is was actually um, they were actually originally they were wearing upside down, I believe, prisoners from the Nazi concentration camp who were homosexuals, right? They made them wear pink triangles, and so 
later on homosexuals would wear that as a kind of solidarity right, for their movement. All right, so LGBT political victories. And again, LGBTQ uh, plus, this is totally new. The plus is really, I don't even know if it's a decade, if it's a decade old, the plus, and it's just being added on and added on. In England, they have, I don't know, over a hundred genders recognized legally. It's, it is ludicrous and we're falling more and more into it. The increased visibility and activism of LGBT, they didn't put the rest of the letters, individuals in the 1970s helped the movement make progress on multiple fronts. In 1977, for instance, this New York Supreme Court ruled that transgender woman Renee Richards could play at the United States Open uh, Tennis Tournament as a woman. And this is interesting, 1977, right? they allowed this New York City Supreme Court, not the federal Supreme Court. So they allow, or they're, they're already allowing uh, biological males playing in women's sports. Additionally, several open 1977. Additionally, several openly LGBT members secured public office positions. This is interesting. So in, in Michigan, in Michigan, Ann Harbor in 1974 became the first out American to be elected to public office, right? That's probably just a homosexual, not a trans. LGBT doesn't really distinguish. Harvey Milk, who campaigned on a pro-gay rights platform, became the San Francisco city supervisor in 1978, becoming the first openly gay man elected to the political office in California, right? Interesting stuff, we're not gonna get on to this. And then, and so, the, so the rainbow flag was actually first unveiled in 1978. It was unveiled by a man named Gilbert Baker, an artist and gay rights activist. So he was asked to create an emblem that represents the movement and would be seen as a symbol of pride. Originally, you know, the, um, the, rainbow, the rainbow colors is a symbol of Christianity, but now again, it's hijacked by LGBT in, in Peru. Where I used to live there, I used to do missionary activity in one of the towns in a very indigenous area near Cusco. The, the, the flag that represented their town was a rainbow flag, right? Little do they know that now that's universally, right, pertains to the uh, LGBT movement. The following year in 1979, more than 100,000 people took part in the first national march on Washington for lesbian and gay rights. So the flag, 1978. Outbreak of AIDS, what's the history, what spin is the History Channel gonna give on this? The outbreak of AIDS in the United States dominated the struggle for gay rights in 1980s and early 1990s. <laughs> now, I wonder why. In 1981, the Centers for Disease Control, right, the CDC and Prevention uh, published a report about five previously healthy homosexual men become infected with a rare, rare type of pneumonia. By 1984, researchers have identified the cause of AIDS, the human uh, HIV, and the Food and Drug Administration licensed the first commercial blood test for HIV in 1985. Two years later, blah, 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 blah is explaining, explanation, what about cause, cause. Gay rights proponents held the second national march. See, this is interesting. So they totally just passed off this. They totally don't even mention that. And, and I have another article here, just to, I'll go back to this, but why is it that, and this is from Healthline, by no way a political or partisan, you know, um, website. Why do gay men have higher chance of getting HIV, right? And that's just, that's just true. And why is that? Because studies show they're more promiscuous. And check this out, this is anal sex, right? Talking about anal sex, which is very, very dangerous. Um, let me see right here, this anal sex here. Uh, so HIV can be, tr be transmitted. All right, this has become, all right, I found it here. So the reason some people have asked me this and I didn't really know why it's more, even with heterosexual people, it's, it's dangerous, especially if you're promiscuous and heterosexual and you're having anal sex, that's dangerous, especially for the 
right? Um, right, the receptive partner. All right, um, hopefully no kids are watching this. So uh, the reason for this, because the skin around the anus is actually thinner, right, than the skin around the vagina. So it's, it's actually so small, um, it's so thin that if, if there's tears, right, in, in the penis, then, um, right, there's, there's more likely to be blood on blood contact. So that's the reason and promiscuity. So again, they don't want to say anything about it. And when we, I'm telling you, when we um, go against nature, nature reacts. And this is God's way of telling us because God reveals his will in nature, in our natural impulses, not as individuals, but as humans in the sense that we have universal de fundamental desires as humans, not as an individual. I, Raphael, have individual desires, but me as a human has certain individual, uh, certain desires placed in me by God. And that is how God reveals to us naturally his will. So when we go against nature, then it's, it's, it's really, um, it's detrimental to us. Now, homosexuality is not a universal now, desire. It's a, it's a disordered desire. The, the fundamental, the, the cause of, of homosexuality is really a um, immature uh, affections, right? Not uh, affections that haven't grown fully. And, and, and some people may not have fault for the tendency, right? They don't have fault in the tendency. We all have disordered tendencies, but we have to fight against them, right? We can't go against every, we can't follow every tendency that we have, right? The sin is in the act, not so much in the tendency. So that's important. There's hope. So homosexuality is against nature. I mean, again, the, the body of the woman and the body of the man make no sense without each other. The body and the man, the body and the man are not physically compatible. So again, nothing about, and this does a huge injustice, right? This is a huge injustice by the History Channel to not expand on this, on the AIDS epidemic being hugely within the um, homosexual community. Don't ask, don't tell. This was good by Bill Clinton. Um, the, left's, the, the, the left uh, took it away, right? I believe it was Obama. So um, in 1992, Bill Clinton, during his campaign to become president, promised he would lift the ban against gays in the military. But after failing to garner enough support for such an open policy, President Clinton in 1993 passed the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy, which allowed gay men and women to serve in the military as long as they kept their sexuality a secret. I mean, why talk about sexual orientation? It's... Gay rights advocates decry the don't ask, don't tell policy, as it did little to stop people from being discharged on grounds of their sexuality. It was Obama. Yeah, here it is. I forgot I read this. In 2011, President Obama fulfilled a campaign promise to repeal a don't ask, don't tell. By that time, more than 12,000 officers have been discharged from the military from don't ask, don't tell for refusing to hide their sexuality. Refusing to hide their sexuality. Don't Ask, Don't Tell was officially repealed on September 20th, 2011. Excuse me. So 1992, um, uh, let's go here a little bit here. I want to pass this. The, the Matthew Shepard Act right in 2003, gay rights proponents had another bit of happy news. They, uh, they struck down Texas um, it was actually the Supreme Court, Texas's anti-sodomy law, right? And um, they actually, they also incorporated acts against homosexuals as hate, hate crime acts. So these were new, newly incorporated. And in 2011, was it 2011? No, it was um, 2015. 2015, no, it wasn't 2015. 2015 was when the Boy Scouts lifted their ban on openly gay leaders and employees and we know how that ended for the the boy scouts of course this was on yeah 2015 it was 2012 that's when it was no i'm still wrong 2015 gay marriage was finally ruled by the supreme court right now it's five four and it was a catholic uh it was not who was Anthony Kennedy, who was Anthony Kennedy, who was a conservative judge. 
and he sided with the, the liberal judges, right, in favor of six same-sex marriage rights. Right. So this was in, that was June 2015. This I actually have what he read here, what he the ruling, what the ruling uh, said. No union is more profound than marriage. For quote. No union is more profound than marriage, for it embodies the highest ideals of love and fidelity, devotion, sacrifice, and family. In forming a marital union, two people become something greater than once they were. As some of the petitioners in these cases demonstrate, marriage embodies a love that may endure even past death. It would, it would misunderstand, it would misunderstand these men and women to say they disrespect the idea of marriage. Their plea is that they do respect it, respect it so deeply that they seek to find its fulfillment for themselves. Their hope is to be condemned to live in holiness, loneliness, sorry, loneliness, excluded from one of civilization's oldest institutions. They ask for equal dignity in the eyes of the law. The constitutions grant them that right, grants them that right. But I mean, end quote. What is marriage? I mean, let's talk about what marriage is. First of all, how do we define things, right? like the whole new question about what is a woman? How about we define things and then talk about, right, if they really seek it or not? All right, so I do want to end now with some quotes from scripture showing that it's a sin, homosexuality is a sin. It is a sin. Sodom and Gomorrah, remember in Genesis chapter 19, I'm going to share my screen with these and so we can see it here. All right, let's share right here. Here it is. You could probably see me also. Genesis 19, I marked some places here. So we know with Sodom and Gomorrah, what happened when Lot, when these three men went to Lot, the, the first paragraph here, and right in the middle, um, they said, uh, Lot prepared a feast for them. These three men came by, complete with the fresh bread made without yeast, and they ate. But before they retired for the night, all the men of Sodom, young and old, came from all over the city and surrounded the house. I'm sorry, it's two angels, not three. They shouted to Lot, where are the men who came to spend the night with you? Bring them out to us so we can have sex with them. Very good. You know, sometimes they translate this. You have to translate the sense, not exactly. The exact translation is lay with them so we can lay with them. No, so we can have sex with them. That's the sense. St. Jerome said, you have to translate the sense. Um, right? You want to be exact as possible, but you don't want to just do it word for word. And not always. So sometimes, yes, we're not going to get into biblical right translation now, but uh, or language to language, but that's, that's basically what it's all about. So Lot stepped outside to talk to them, shutting the door behind him. Please, my brothers, he begged, don't do such a wicked thing. Look, I have two virgin daughters. Let me bring them to you and you can do with them as you wish. But please leave these men alone, for they are my guests and they are under my protection. Stand back, they shouted. This fellow came to town as an outsider and now is acting like our judge. Look at this. This is, you, this, I'm stopping right here. You see this all the time. He's saying, don't do such a wicked thing. And then these men, these perverse men, sexually perverse men, gay men, are saying, don't be our judge. Do not judge us. We hear that a lot today. We'll treat you far worse than those other men. You know what? Stopping here. There's also a link between sexual perversion and violence. There is, there is maliciousness and violence. So when we do one evil, we're like pulling off a glove, you know, by the fingers. The entire glove comes off. All the evils are related intimately. They lunge forward a lot. Uh, toward Lot to break the door down, but the two angels reached out, pulled Lot into the house, and bolted the door. Then they blinded all the men, young and old, who were at the door of the house, and, and they gave up trying to get inside. So that's in Genesis. Levit Leviticus 18.22. Do not practice homosexuality, having sex with other men as with a woman. It is a detestable sin. Leviticus. Leviticus 20. If a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man as with a woman, both men have committed a detestable act. They must both be put to death for they are guilty of a capital offense. Right? It's one of the sins that cry up to heaven for vengeance. This is, this is a huge sin. And it's a sin that blinds. It blinds us to eternity. 
it, it destroys our faith, right? It destroys our faith ultimately. Uh, the book of Judges. This this was this is a real this is a kind of mysterious reading, uh, chapter nineteen. But uh, a man is invited to the house uh, of of another man, and um, and essentially, you know, perverse men come and said, you know, let the man come out so we can have sex with him. The man, the man who is hosting the other man, says, please do not touch the man. I'll give you my daughters. And he said, no, we want the man. Um, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They, they accept the daughters and do nothing to the man. So you just said, um, again, but the man who's hosting says, don't do such an evil thing, right? The feeling is, is evil, depraved. First Kings chapter 14. And there was also male cult prostitutes in the land. They did according to all the abominations of the nations that the Lord drove out before the people of Israel male cult prostitutes, right? Homosexuals. First Kings 15, again, male cult prostitutes. Second Kings, same thing, female shrine prostitutes. Um, Romans 1, and this is really important here. And I'm just going to jump to the third paragraph here. You can read the whole thing. Chap Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 32. I'm going to read what's in yellow. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with other, which each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men. And as a result of the sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. So ultimately, God abandoned them. Right? He abandoned them. And they fell into idolatry. They started worship other, worshiping other gods right? because of the sin. The sin, uh, you know, God is, God is allergic to sin. He cannot be with those who sin, in, in, especially in this way, such a, a grave sin against one's body, which is a temple of the Holy Spirit, the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, so God gave them up. God, in a sense, gave them up to all their desires, right? Once they expressed the will to do it. I mean, God, he gave, and, and even falling into this really deep, um, you know, drinking up down to the dregs of homosexuality is itself the punishment of God. Right, um, it, it's just it's a sad life. It's a sad life, and and, and it's a punishment of God. And and many times God allows people to fall all the way down in order to raise them back up. But with homosexuality, it's so hard because it's so blinding. So let us pray. Let us pray for them, right, and and love them. So it is a question of love deep down always. Let us always be motivated by love. First Corinthians chapter six. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or, or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or abusive or cheerful people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Practice homosexuality. All right. Uh, First Timothy is there. I just want to read Jude 7. Jude is very strong. A letter. Don't forget Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring towns, which, they, which were filled with immorality and every kind of sexual perversion. Those cities were destroyed by fire and serve as a warning of the eternal fire of God's judgment. And so God, I mean, the world is, is ripe, ripe. For God's for God's justice, I saw a meme. It's funny, but sad at the same time. It says, "Yes, these are the true fireworks of of pride celebration." It is a picture of Sodom and Gomorrah with uh, the the raining of fire and brimstone. So, again, um, it's you know we laugh to not cry, right? It's it's a sad situation, but let's pray and let us fight for this, right? Fight for this because ultimately, as I said in the beginning, June is originally dedicated still is to the sacred heart of Jesus and that sacred heart is totally outraged by all the offenses that that men do against his heart especially the sexual offenses right that really offends our Lord because it it, it means a total rejection of God of his plan of purity of his plan of using sex in an ordered way right um it's really an affront so let, let us always think of of consoling our Lord like 
the blessed or Saint Francis, or Francisco, uh, just Francisco Marito from uh, the Seer Fatima, right? The little pastor children, child. And um, who always, he emphasized consoling God, right? L Jacinta, his sister who died, right? Not, not, too, not too long after him. She focused more on saving souls from hell. Now they're, they're just two sides of the same coin. He focused on consoling our Lord. And that's fascinating and a mystery. How Our Lady called these children to console our Lord, who is outraged by these sins. And this is a, a special outrage to use the month of June as Pride Month. All right, so let's keep praying and, and, and fight back, fight back. Always motivated by charity. All right, thank you very much. Take care. God bless. I'll see you next time. Bye now.